Ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch with another Rust-based game engine. Today we're going to be looking at Bevy. If you didn't follow along, yesterday we looked at Firox, uh, the game engine that previously was known as Rage 3D. That one is more Unity-like. This one is more of a lower level framework, at least for now. And both of them just had updates. Um, we saw Bevy 0.6 was just released. What you see in front of you is one of the Bevy examples. This is a GLTF example, uh, loading a GLTF file and animating some lights around it. In case you were wondering, the code behind it looks exactly like this. By the way, this is IntelliJ. Uh, I highly recommend if you're working with Rust, get the Rust plugin for IntelliJ completely free, and it's a great setup. Uh, so here you can see just kind of an example of what Bevy code looks like. And one of the things I really like about Bevy in general is I am no Rust coder, uh, but I find it very intuitive to follow. This code just makes sense to me. Um, I don't really need to know all of the weird eccentric uh, kind of features of the Rust programming language. And that's one of those things I find a lot of times with game engines written with a language that's a little bit more, um, a little less mainstream, I think is how I'd put it. You find a lot of those things just overuse language features. I don't find that with Bevy. Bevy is very straightforward in how it approaches things. It is a data-driven ECS or entity component system-based game engine. Right now, there is no tooling. So if you're wanting the tooling kind of things, if you want a more Unity type experience, you're going to want to go with Firox. But Bevy has come a very long way in a short period of time. And as I said, we've got the 0 0.6 release um, just a couple days back. We're going to look at the details of it. But first, let's cover a bit of what Bevy is all about. First off, you can see here, Bevy is available at bevyengine.org. Um, it is data-driven, uses an ECS, a custom end component system. This makes it fast, uh, simple, uh, and it's also very scalable, which is why a lot of things are moving towards an ECS approach, especially as we live in a world of, uh, you know, more and more cores and processors and parallelism. Um, it has a 2D renderer, but it also has a 3D renderer, and a big part of the 0.6 release is updates to that 3D renderer. It basically got rewritten. Uh, there is a render graph. It is cross-platform, as you're seeing right now. It is running on my M1 Mac. Uh, it also runs on Windows, runs on various different Linux flavors, and um, Android and iOS are on the way. You can also target the web, which is quite cool. They've got their own UI system. Uh, they've got support for scenes, so you can create and uh, save and load ECS worlds using their built-in scene system, the way of creating uh, saved games and states makes for creating tools and level editors easier down the road, which is something they are going to be adding. Uh, there is audio support, uh, including the ability to load MP3 files as assets and play audio out. Uh, it supports hot reloading. Uh, it's got quick compile times. It is free and open source. Uh, by the way, the licensing just changed as we were going to see in 0.6, but don't worry, it changed for the better. And yeah, that is the gist of uh, Bevy in general. Now we're going to look at uh, some of the updates in 0.6. Now, it's been a while. The last update for Bevy was 0.5, and this was covered back in April. Uh, so you can see here, it, it's been almost a year since the last update, so there's quite a bit in this one. And we are not going to go through all of it, but here we are at the Bevy 0.6 release notes, and these are very in-depth. Bravo, Bevy team, on creating some very, very detailed release notes. So we're going to go through, and we'll do the TLDR right here. So there is a brand new modern renderer that's prettier, faster, and simpler to extend. In terms of the details of that renderer, they break it down in this article in extreme detail. I will, of course, link this article in the linked documents down below, as well as all the other resources you need to get going with Bevy. So don't worry about following along too much. Um, we got directional endpoint light shadows, forward cluster, clustered forward rendering, frustrum calling, significantly faster sprite rendering with less boilerplate code required, um, native WebGL 2 support. Uh, you can run the examples in your browser. They don't seem to work in Safari on Mac, by the way, but Safari uh, and WebGL, <laughs> yeah. So don't blame Bevy, blame Safari most likely. Um, high level custom materials, more powerful shaders, preprocessors, imports, WGSL support, and uh, Bevy the ECS or Entity Component System ergonomics performance improvements and no more use of dot system. So here you can see a breakdown of the brand new renderer. So basically when this project started out, they kind of, it was not meant to be as kind of big as it is. It had a good enough renderer. Now they're moving towards a uh, much more in-depth renderer. Lots of uh, features and functionality here. So you can see here why they built a new one. Uh, 
and then all of the details of the render. I'm not going to get into all the rendering details, uh, but they kind of go through uh, what they worked with here. Uh, underneath the surface, they've used they used the WGPU um, abstraction layer. Uh, they're kind of they used to do a kind of a, a decoupling layer between it. Uh, they've gotten rid of that, and part of that is because the WGPU uh, moved their licensing and some of the restrictions and problems they had to be more compliant with Bevy, so those two projects are more synergetic now. Uh, so that layer of um, abstraction has been removed or reduced. Um, so yeah, so you can see full details of this release, the details of the new um, frustum crawling, uh, directional shadows, uh, point light shadows, and so on. Like I said, they do very in-depth release notes. Uh, so yeah, I, I say we can keep going and going. Um, but yeah, there, there's quite a bit here in terms of what is in this release. If you want to get uh, full details of the 0.6 release, do be sure to check this out. Uh, updates to the underlying ECS system as well. So there is a lot here, uh, as you can see, as we keep going. Um, yeah, so uh, cross the board updates on this particular release. Uh, again, the big thing here is the new underlying renderer uh, should position them well for the future. Now, as with all of these releases, there are some breaks. This is considered a sub 1.0 release. So you are going to expect every time there's an updates for, you know, underlying APIs to change, code to change and so on. There is a migration guide. So if you were using it before, uh, this will walk you through everything you need to know uh, to get your code up and running. It's not too bad. Uh, there's not a lot of breaking changes in this particular release. A lot of it's just uh, simple refactors and so on. Uh, one thing to be aware of, though, they do require Rust 2021. Uh, so if you're running an older install of Rust, you may have to do an update. You're going to want to make sure that you have uh, basically support for uh, the updated Rust features and updated cargo uh, are required to work with it. So uh, you may have to update your Rust if that is the case. Uh, but all the details are here in the migration guide, which of course I will link as well. Uh, if you want to get started with it, the other cool thing here is there is also a book kind of walks you through getting started, what you need to know, and so on. Uh, there's also this excellent assets link here, kind of shows you the various different examples that are available, um, a cheat book, and we got a number of uh, other examples that you can download or, or backends or extensions and so on. Uh, some great stuff available there, but out of the box, you're gonna find there are tons of examples available for you. And of course, this is an open source project. Uh, one of the changes also that happened in this release is the licensing. Uh, they've moved to a dual licensing model that is more compatible uh, with the way that the um, Rust ecosystem works, which is, I think it's MIT and Apache 2. Most of the tools under the, the in the Rust ecosystem are Apache 2 based. Uh, so we should have a compatibility across the board there. And there is, the, so yeah, MIT and Apache licensing here. Those Both of those licenses are very liberal in what they allow you to do. It's just there are some specific things that Apache 2 grants, and that is kind of the de facto license in the world of Rust. If you want to get started with this guy, it is super simple. Basically, just come on in here. Of course, install the Rust tool rust up um, get uh, cargo installed and so on clone this repository right here so let's go over here and basically oops let me stop this example all right so what you do go into the directory where you wish it to be do a uh, git clone and then paste that URL right there. I have already done so, so what you will find is you then have a folder called bevy in place switch into said directory like so and you will find uh, there is a file here called cargo. What that enables you to do is run a number of cargo commands. Cargo is uh, like NPM. It's a package manager slash build tool, etc. Kind of the wonder glue tool of the Rust world. Uh, cargo run dash dash examples. And then you pick an example from the examples folder. For example, I think it was load GLTF is the one we just looked at. Um, oops. Exam pull like so. And it will run the example so if it hasn't built it already, it will build it for you. Uh, you want to just go ahead and take a look in the examples folder. You're going to see there are a number of different examples in there. One that you may want to check out is example. Uh, okay, spend too much time on Windows. All right, here we go. In the game folder, you're going to find there's an example called Alien Cake Addict. I would go ahead and check that one out. So cargo run dash dash example alien cake addict. You can see it in action right here. And it is 
a 3D world, kind of a, so when cakes spawn, you go and eat it and grab the next one. So I want to show you just kind of how you'd build a more complex Rust game and like so. So go ahead and we'll shut that down. And what you will find is here I am, again, I'm in presentation mode right now, but this here is um, the IntelliJ version with the uh, Rust plugins installed. I highly recommend uh, going that route, but what you're gonna find, come on over here to projects, uh, that is a good place to start. So again, games, alien cake, it's a single file, let's open that guy up. And here you can see, let me just go back to the full screen mode, uh, view mode, presentation mode. All right, here you go. So this is the code behind that 3D game we just saw in action. And um, again, it's it's pretty readable, especially if you've ever used an entity component system. As you see, a lot of things are very data-driven in nature, uh, but there's nothing really overwhelming here, um, even if you're not that familiar with the Rust programming language. And again, this is a great environment to work with. The IntelliJ uh, tooling, I highly recommend it. From what I've seen, and I only worked a little bit with the Visual Studio Code stuff, which is also another option, I find that this is one of the best setups. You're gonna see there's actually a cargo tab over here once you've got things installed. So you can go ahead and actually pick the project you wanna run directly that way and run it from in here. There is debugger support, there is code completion support, and everything else. So I would highly recommend checking out IntelliJ IDEA if you are looking for a code editor to work with Rust in general and Bevy in specific. So uh, that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, is the um, 0.6 release of the Bevy framework. Um, I do intend at one of these points in time to, to learn Rust a bit better. And when I do, it is going to be using Bevy for sure. And again, there's no tooling here. Uh, this is technically not a game engine. It's more of a framework at this point in time, uh, but it's also fairly young in nature and it is growing quite rapidly, has a good community support behind it. And as you see in this particular release from the last one, completely new renderer, a bunch of performance improvements, improvements to the ECS underlying it, etc. It's got a nice trajectory for sure. So I would I would definitely recommend if you are looking to learn um, the Rust uh, programming language for game development reasons, uh, check out Bevy. And if you are already using Rust, Bevy just seems to be one of the front runner frameworks. Again, this and uh, the engine we checked out yesterday, the formerly Rage 3D engine slash uh, now the Firox game engine, those seem to be kind of the two front runners in my mind. There used to be other ones such as Piston and Amethyst. And I remember checking out, I think it was Amethyst, and it made me feel outright stupid because it basically they just tried to do too many clever things and the code was so unapproachable. I don't find that with Bevy for sure. I find this one to be probably the most approachable, whereas the Firox engine we looked at the other day has by far and away more tooling. It has a 3D level editor and so on. Uh, so there's there's definitely some nice developments in the Rust ecosystem. And if there's another game engine out there in the Rust ecosystem I haven't covered that you would recommend me look at, uh, please let me know in the comments down below. And that is it. And I think that is probably the end of Rust week. It's weird that we had uh, major releases from the two most prominent Rust game engines like back to back. I don't know if there's a reason for that in the world of Rust, but yeah, that was that. Let me know what you think. Talk to you later. Goodbye.